Okay, so a huge revelation we found out recently is that Frieza has been able to evolve his golden form even further beyond. We recently discovered that while Frieza was in hell, he wasn't just getting tortured, he was also training his body with his mind, using a special form of image training to unlock his potential and raise his stamina, therefore creating true golden Frieza. It's not the first time Dragon Ball has explored this. We also saw it with Krillin and Gohan in the Namek arc, and we saw Trunks do it in Dragon Ball Super. In fact, a lot of Goku's training in Dragon Ball when he was up on Kami's lookout with Mr. Popo also involved a lot of mental over physical type training. So the question is, what is the secret to Frieza's power? What is the secret to mental image training in Dragon Ball using real martial arts principles? The discussion begins now. This is Lord Beerus, and unless you want your planet destroyed, subscribe to Geekdom 101. It's even better than pudding. Frieza unveiled that he is now beyond Golden Frieza. He is true Golden Frieza, and it's weird because you would think that in order for him to achieve a new power, he would have to train his body, and he couldn't train his body because he was stuck in that cocoon in hell. Well, Frieza revealed that he trained his body using his mind but how did he do it on this video we're going to give you the secret to true golden freeze's power and how he was able to surpass his limitations and kill any sort of weakness with the golden freeze of form joining me to talk about this please welcome back the man who is the martial artist extraordinaire Welcome back, Kendamu, dude. Whoa. Now, let's talk about really more so image training or mental training. You know, we see Krillin and Gohan do this in the anime. We see Goku kind of learn it with Kami. We see uh, Trunks do it in Dragon Ball Super where they have their eyes closed and they're imagining an opponent. And it's safe to say that Frieza, who never trained in his entire life, according to Resurrection F, now has not only learned how to train his body physically, but also mentally as well. And it's interesting that he's such a prodigy that he was able to figure this out all by himself with no sensei, with no master. He just figured it out. So... What do you think Frieza did in that cocoon? What do you think were the principles of real life image training? Because there's actually some real world stuff here that Frieza did that we can all do in our daily lives. Yeah, so Frieza, what he did was essentially visualization meditation. And what he also did, and I've mentioned this before to you when we're talking about Gohan, I've mentioned it on my own channel about Goku in the super manga, you know, kind of completing the Super Saiyan Blue transformation, is that transformations, they take as much in the way of mental concentration as they do, you know, physical stamina. So what you have when Frieza doesn't have the ability to, you know, physically train is he's doing the best he can by taking advantage of visualization meditation and by taking advantage of trying to hold his transformation as long as he can when it comes to frieza he was in that cocoon no physical nothing so what are the secrets of mental training like how do you prepare yourself and how can you actually affect your body with your mind because we've heard stories in the past of people doing miraculous things with their mind that would affect their body. Now, obviously, there's that book called The Secret that talks about how if you visualize something, you can make it happen. Now, some people took that as being something that's very spiritual and very kind of hocus-pocusy, but that wasn't really the point of that. It was mostly about how if you want to accomplish a goal in life or if you want something, if you keep thinking about it and working for it, you can achieve it, and I certainly believe that for certain what is it about like the mind that can affect the body like what it, what exactly is going on here in real life meditation uh in order to start controlling the mind first you actually control the body and you do that through breathing techniques you start controlling your breathing in a certain way and then that starts you know con that starts kind of putting your mind in a certain place and that's when they sort of come together to do something. And then in regards to mental training, Frieza, you know, imagining killing Goku and stuff like that. And just all the different 
horrible, vengeful things he wants to do to him and everything. Once you reach that meditative state, you can sit and you can imagine yourself, say you're playing basketball. Uh, you can imagine yourself, you know, if you're bad at free, free throws or whatever. Uh, you can imagine yourself, you know, hitting free throws over and over and over again. You can sit there and you can imagine it. You can imagine it. In the martial arts context, it might be, you know, you're bad at, uh, you're bad at an overhand right. So you, you imagine yourself doing that overhand right. And that sort of starts creating the same mental pathways. That's helping those mental pathways you're already building through physical practice. What you have is, in addition to physical training, at least in real life, you have the mental training to go along with it. And it's something that you hear a lot of people do. There are people who are, you know, competitive in martial arts or whatever. And they say, oh, you know, one of my things I do is, you know, I imagine myself winning, you know, and exactly how I'm going to do it. And I imagine myself, you know, at that tournament, it, it motivates you. And it also, like, it's been scientifically studied, people who practice their shots only physically versus people who only visualize versus people who do both. The people who do just the visualization do surprisingly better than you would think. The people who do it only physically, like, you know, they're obviously getting something out of it. But the people who do both, like, those are, you know, the people who really excelled in that study. And while Frieza was limited to not being able to do physical training while he was in hell, uh, he at least took advantage of that visualization training, and he at least took advantage of trying to sustain his transformation for longer, which was his ultimate downfall in Resurrection F. That's right. So basically the way that I'm perceiving it is, and I agree with what you're saying, that Frieza actually did pay attention to what Goku and Vegeta had stated in Resurrection F about how, oh, well, when you achieve this form, you didn't waste any time. You came to fight us without mastering your body, without figuring out how to use the form. And I, I guess the whole idea was that Frieza recognized that and actually spent the entire time he was in hell after that dreaming about killing Goku and maybe Vegeta as well because he hates those two guys. And in a way, sort of... Maybe accidentally, without even realizing it, f trained his body to no longer have that limitation. It's almost like, you know, if you can dream it, you can achieve it type thing. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. And that, you know, like I've said before about transformations, they take a mental toll on you. It's a, the a transformation is, uh, I mean, the way we see it portrayed, you know, the, the, the Super Saiyans or Super Saiyans were given, you know, blonde hair, you know, in order to differentiate, you know, from what you've seen before and also so there was less inking to do back in the 80s and 90s when it was all done by hand in the realistic sense you know that we're talking about different states of mind here that then affect your performance that allow you to kind of tap into deeper reserves of you know the, the kind of who you are that that extra it that you have and you know that extra thing that you know all those Dragon Ball characters bring forward, kind of like the the moral there of you know having that courage and having that energy and having that drive, like that's what that is. And when you sit and you and you get yourself in that state of mind, you get that concentration going on. You can only hold it for a certain amount of time at first, but then it gets easier and it gets easier and it gets easier. You you've got to practice your mind the same way you practice your body. You know, you got to train them both. And when you train them both, you get the ultimate results. Frieza obviously trained his body while he was alive, and while he was dead, he trained his mind and while his body's not going anywhere, he's dead. So he doesn't even have a formal martial arts master. He just kind of learned and listened and actually was like, you know what? I can do better, which to me shows a lot of development in Frieza. He's always been this spoiled kind of guy, but his hatred for Goku and his anger for losing again to this guy, you know, and for losing to Vegeta, of course, is what inspired him. And I find it very interesting because... All that time Frieza was in hell, he had no idea he would ever be brought back. All his servants, his minions were pretty much finished. Um, he had no friends in the world of the living. There was no way he could have predicted that Goku would come see him for this tournament of power. So it's almost like, like it was all accidental in a way. Like he's so much of a prodigy that he 
accidentally discovered how to be a martial artist. Now, that's how much of a prodigy this guy actually yes, is. Yes, that's 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 what makes him so scary. You know, like Resurrection F. You know, we learned oh he's never actually trained before, and you know, in order to uh, he leapt over every villain, yeah. bro. Cell, boo. Exactly. He leapt over all exactly. Of them. Like once he <laughs> finally decided, hey, I'm going to do a little bit of training, and not only that, but I'm going to make my form gold just to spite the people I hate. You know. Uh, that's, I mean, he's he's got that drive. I mean, it's an evil drive, but, you know, he's got it. And once someone finally pushed him to try and use it, because, I mean, yeah, he's always been this spoiled guy, but no one throughout his whole life, you know, no one ever really challenged him until Goku transformed. And then as soon as he comes back, that's you know, right. he's still mad about that. He trains for a few months. So basically a few months later in his living life anyway, you know, he goes to get his revenge on Goku and he gets taken down again because, you know, he doesn't really know what he's doing. But both times that he died, you know, the first time, well, he lost to Goku and then, you know, he died against Trunks. You know, those times, you know, he learned about training and transformation. And then when he was in, and then when he died his second time, you know, he, he that drive just got stronger. And even though he didn't know he was going to get brought back, you know, he learned something from that and he started training it, even if, like you said, it was by accident. Mental training is just as important as physical training. And don't forget that in your everyday. If you want to achieve something in life, and I mean this very sincerely, think about it, figure out how you're going to achieve it, and do it. If you want to get bigger, research how to get bigger muscles, how to train your body, hypertrophy training, all that stuff, and then do it and but also visualize it think about it it's all real it all works whether you're trying to graduate college or whether you're trying to lose weight you know i sound like an inspirational speech right now but whatever dragon ball is very inspiring definitely do it and what i want you to do besides all that is check out kendamu's channel i will leave a link down below anything else you want to say before we get out of here if you put your mind to it you can do it and by do it, I mean read the damn manga. <laughs> we'll talk to you later.